Hello everyone, welcome back to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and I'm delighted to present this new deck to you, Grena Friends, where helpful little robots give us everything that we want. Uh, so, the basic idea behind this deck is that this is a tribute-focused deck using Combustion Cell and Brimstone Altar to trigger essentially free tributes. Uh, once per turn, we can sacrifice units to either deal damage or gain extra power. We use that power to cast extremely strong tribute effects, which of course do trigger when the card is sacrificed to the combustion cell or the altar. So as a basic idea of what's going on here, we have our big, big cards, Jack the Lone Gun, who whenever an enemy unit goes into the enemy void, it gets void bound. Jack himself is deadly, and when he tributes, he kills an enemy unit. He also has some infiltrate effects, which don't come into play too often, but the bad news does occasionally help when you get to do some cool things and ready your units and attack twice. Lots of fun there. Uh, Ava Island's Elite tributes to create and draw two 1-2 Cloud Snakes with flying, which we can then use for further tributes, delightfully enough. Ava is a really, really big uh, engine for creating lots of cool tributes in this deck, and she's pretty fun as just a decent 4-5 that you can actually like throw out and get a lot of value out of. Uh, Jawbone Greatsword is a good removal card that also happens to function as a way to get an extra card out of our tribute, i.e. Brand Without Fear, the 8-6 Berserk that when you summon it, you can sacrifice another unit to give Brand Overwhelm. And finally, we have our classic Ends, End of Hostilities, which is a really solid way to turn a losing board into a winning one and to turn a winning board into a disgusting one. And End of the Line, a card that tends to stabilize a lot better against aggro and deal a lot of damage to those uh, pesky Scream decks and Haunted Highways and Skycrag and Rakano. Uh, End of the Line is a card that I really like. think should be played more. Uh, I think I've mentioned this a lot, but this is just a really, really good card in the list, and it happens to be very solid for stabilizing you and also getting you that extra bit of damage that you might need to come across. So, all of these cards are fueled by our Grenadins, Grenadin Drone, Assembly Line, and Manufacture, which creates and draws three 1-1 one -one Grenadins. I really like Manufacture for the creation and draw. Uh, basically, if you have Grenadin in your hand, you can do a lot of different interesting things with them. Uh, you can hold them to play them directly into a Combustion Cell, which means that you can protect your Grenadin resources until you actually need them to cast a Tribute. And with Combustion Cell, that tends to be a pretty big deal. You can also trade these cards into the market and sell them at the store for other cool things. Our market includes a Bloodright Callus because fun, basically. Uh, there are a lot of other things we can put in this slot, including we have often used one of our jacks in this slot. Uh, Combustion Cell, because it's a pretty necessary combo piece that happens to be the best part of our combo. Brimstone Altars work as well, but Combustion Cell is the card that actually gets us up to six, which is where basically all of our big bombs lie. We have a War Helm. Uh, this has a special purpose. We actually use this to create a sort of mini combo within the deck. Once we create a Bren off of Jaw Jawbone Greatsword, or a Brand off of Jawbone Greatsword, uh, we can then use the War Helm to give Brand haste and basically deal 18 damage in a single swing. Since it's an Overwhelm Berserk unit, this is a really good way to just suddenly take advantage of an opening in our opponent's defensive position. It's a really, really good thing to just sort of pull out and suddenly generate a huge amount of damage, which sacrifice decks tend to be a little bit more uh, dirtily. They tend to do a lot more like sort of playing with their own resources and slowly whittling people down, having some sort of way to deal like a ridiculous amount of damage very quickly is often a really good idea. So this Warhelm was actually proven really, really fun. So whenever it's time for the finishing blow, you can definitely go ahead and throw out this Warhelm and get some cool things off of that. Boar, this is standard attachment destruction, tends to be really, really effective. There's basically no better market choice for the merchant. You could use Ruin if you're worried about relic weapons, but Boar is definitely going to get you a lot of value and deal with a lot of the pesky mask decks, chalice decks, crown decks, obelisk decks, basically anything that has relics that must be killed, as well as anything that like plays a lot of weapons on its own units, although that's typically a little less common. Most of the time Boar is a one for one, but every now and then you get something cool out of it. You can even hold onto it, kill some enemy attachments, and then trade the copy into the market for additional card advantage. Although that's not usually a thing that you have to worry about here with the amount of Grenadine that we're going to be drawing and playing into the deck. 
Finally, a stone scar banner. Uh, we'll talk about this more when we talk about markets, but basically it's always good to have a power in the market. It's just a really, really solid way to make sure that you get the power that you need to play the cards that you want. And if you've already got all of your other pieces, a stone scar banner is typically the best thing that you can grab out of the market. And grabbing this is typically a very, very good choice. Okay, so uh, what else is going on? We have our Grenadine drones, we have our manufacturer, we have our assembly line, combustion cell and brimstone altar give us the tributes that we want. And finally, we have madness as basically a hard removal card. Uh, this card will allow us to steal an enemy unit, hit them with it, and then sacrifice it to brimstone altar or combustion cell, as well as to combust, which is a removal card that tends to be very effective in token lists because it's very cheap and effective and kills basically anything. So since we have two cards that affect basically any unit that we want, we can pick and choose the most dangerous threats, chump block the rest with Grenadine, and then slowly work our way up to, well, it's not actually all that slow. Every card in this list tops out at six. So once you get the combustion cell down, you are typically capable of casting within one to two turns anything that you want off of this list. And all of them are game changers. Jack is a really big influential unit that kills another unit on the board, tends to create a lot of card advantage. End of hostilities, huge amount of card advantage, especially if it's warped. Same with end of the line. Warping this is typically way better than casting it blank, but this card really stabilizes against those aggro lists, and yeah, it's it's a pretty nutty thing. That's basically it. Let's jump into some games, and we'll show off how the deck works. See you in a moment. All right, here we are up against MRNTL. Uh, looks like Ixtune Merchant is playable here. I have no crest, but I do have the draw, so it's potentially possible to keep this hand, even though it's only got two power. I think I'm probably going to go with it. Um, Jack Lone Gun and End of Hostilities and all of these things are pretty big. Uh, Ixtune Merchant can grab Combustion Cell or a power. I might end up with like a little too little going on here. I need both Combustion Cell and Grenadines to work with, so uh, thinking it over, I think we're going to redraw. All right, we see a Crest of Cunning and a Skyquake Banner. I still have the Merchant, which is great, and I even have a Combustion Cell to play with, so yeah, we're going to be able to do quite a bit. I tend to play this pretty greedy. I like to play the... Um, oh, that's interesting. Let's go with the... Hmm. So I want to play Manufacturer on 3, but I also want to play Combustion Cell on 2 and a couple of other things. I think what we're going to do is go for a Fire Sigil here, play the Grenadine Drone, and we'll use Skycrag Banner to play Combustion Cell. Next turn, we can manufacture, combust, do a bunch of other things to sort of sacrifice out our units, and just get ourselves pretty far ahead. Okay. So I get to attack for two here. Uh, I could have waited to play the Combustion Cell. That's probably a good idea, just to attack first and sort of let your opponent think that you're doing something else. Uh, but not a big deal here, just a, just a minor play. Um, okay. So, Skycrack Banner here looks really good. I have a decent amount of power, so I don't really need a lot right now. I could grab Kallus, I could grab Warhelm. Uh, mostly what I want to do here is try and find some like actual cards to tribute, and at the moment there's not very much. So, let's go ahead and trade the... the mm, let's trade a power, probably this Crest of Chaos, for something like a Bloodright Kallus or a Boar. Interesting choices, really. I think we're going to go for the Kallus here. All right, and sometimes this is a Jek. I think that's actually not a bad idea most of the time. Uh, let's go ahead and call it. We'll use the Manufacturer next turn and just go through the motions. Now, Ripknife Assassin is probably going to ask for a trade. I think I'm pretty happy to trade the Extune Merchant into it here. Our units are our resources, but our Grenadines are especially important. Most of our merchants can be traded away for uh, not a lot of issues. Now it's my turn. With Vara, Vengeance Seeker, we can either actually sacrifice the unit, we do have a lot of Grenadine to spare, or we can just leave it be and combust it. I think this time around I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice to it. Just because if there is a particular issue, something that I need to deal with, like I would like to be able to deal with this without using Callus or using other shenanigans, so we're just going to go ahead and combust himself here. Play a Jawbone Greatsword. My brand! Alright, so we have our uh, whole setup there, and now we can start looking for other tributes, or for that matter, other combust targets. I do like Manufacture here. If we do. If we take another combust, I can Manufacture, play a Grenadine, combust it with Combustion Cell, and then combust. Multiple combustion. But I think a combustion engine is not quite what we're looking for, so we're going to just put that on the bottom and then see what we can do with Brand and our other shenanigans. Okay. 
There's another Ixtune Merchant. We can trade that in for... I think a War Helm would not be out of the question. But here, I'm just going to go ahead and play down a Granadin. And I'm not going to sacrifice anything. We'll just leave that be. Now, the reason that we actually sacrificed to the Vara, even though we are going to kill it, was A, we wanted to be able to keep it within range of certain spells, and B, we wanted to be sure that if we got into trouble... Oh, this is interesting. Let's go ahead and play a Shadow here. I'm going to trade... Yeah, we're going to sell this Granadin at the store, get ourselves the Warhelm so we have the whole brand combo set up. And then I can combust here for the Winchest Merchant, but I don't really feel the need to. I think we're good. Uh, playing the Grenadine is fine here, since we kind of want to be able to combust uh, and just like throw Brand and a bunch of other stuff at once. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm curious what he's doing with the uh, Merchant. It could be he's grabbing a big weapon. It could be great he's grabbing a Tavrod. Either way, I don't want to use the Combust here, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to use the Callus either. The Callus is a the Callus is a test thing. I think we're gonna trade it back in for a Jack and do a little bit more things going. All right. So MRNTL has to think about this for a moment, and we'll just let him do that. What shall he posit? Turns out he's not sure. What is my deck doing? It's a mystery. It's a mystery! Alright, so he's made his decision, and attacking for three, that's not very meaningful. We do want to combust Tavrod, which we assume is the trade. Those horns. Cool, so I can just combust here. And once again, my brand. All right, I've got two Brand Without Fears now. I just need more Grenna friends, and once we get those, I think we'll be a little bit happier. <laughs> uh, drawing an Ava Islands Elite here would give us some nice units to sacrifice. Uh, Valkyrie Enforcer is not really a thing either way. He does still have Annihilate, which I'm not super in love with. I think I'm in a Crest of Chaos here. So there's a couple of different options here. I have the Granite Waystone. That's an extra Grenner friend, but I think we're probably going to go ahead and put that on the bottom. I can Bloodright Callus here. That'll kill all my stuff and then give me a 4-4 weapon. Eh, I think I'm not into it. I'm really worried about Annihilate, but I kind of want to just try the combo here. So I think we're going to go for it. Um, it's going to be a bit of an adventure. Why don't we test the waters one more time? I'm gonna attack for three. He didn't block and it didn't look like he really paused for any spell, so we'll just end our turn. There is a pause here, so he's probably got an Annihilate. We're not going to go crazy here, we're just going to like force him to have it. And keep whittling away at him as long as we can. That's fine. Looks like he's thinking about using the Annihilate here. So we'll probably play the first brand just to get the uh, the whole setup out. Oh, this is interesting. So I can sacrifice here to create two Valkyrie Enforcers. I actually kind of like that play. Let's combust here. And then we'll make two Valkyrie Enforcers. I think he can Annihilate this to prevent the end of hostilities, but... Halt, halt! That gets us a little bit ahead on board without costing us a lot. There's the Annihilate. Super happy to see that. Now we can play brand number one, and then, you know, if there's an Annihilator or Slay, that's fine. If not, we'll just sort of uh, keep on moving on. I do need more units at this point, assembly line or some sort of manufacture type effect. Uh, we could go for like a, yeah, there's a couple of different options. Don't care about this Valkyrie, and indeed he did kind of do something ridiculous here. Let's see if we can... So I've got quite a bit of damage. I think what we're going to do is go for three. I need units here is the main problem. So the Granite Wasteland was not a bad choice. Jack Lone Gun is amazing here. We're going to play a Brand. I'm not going to sacrifice. A 6-8 is fine, and if he decides to Vanquisher's Blade, then we know what we're going to do. 
The main thing I need to be sure of is that there's no more Annihilates in his hand. And if there's no more Annihilates, then we have the win. Slay is fine. 5-5 five, five looks good. Alright, so I can either Combust here to go ahead and play the Jack, which is not a bad play. Or I can risk the Annihilate and go for Lethal. It's time for the finishing blow! Time for the finishing blow. So we attack in. Berserk. Eh? <laughs> Alright. And that's, that's why Warhelm's in the market. Lots of fun there. <laughs> Alright, here we are up against Roadrunner. I had some internet difficulties, but I think we'll get through it. This hand looks perfect. It's got Combustion Cell, it's got x Merchant, it's got Manufacture, so it's even got a Combustion and a Job on Greatsword. This is all the things we want in the early game, and none of the things we need for the late game. But that's okay, we'll definitely get the things we need for the late game a little bit later. So, Madness Combust is pretty reasonable, but I really need to find Power 3 so that I can play some of these delicious, delicious cards. So we're going to go ahead and throw back anything that isn't a third power right now, and we're going to keep looking until we find... Yeah, that second fire for Jawbone Greatsword and other delightful shenanigans. Skycrag Banner looks lovely. It does fix my blue. We don't need blue fixing. Um, I think I want four power, so I'm probably going to go with this. Crest of Cunning will probably be my play next turn, and then I'll fix all of my influence, and after that we get to play Combustion Cell, and then Manufacture next turn. We're a little bit behind because of the way that the banners have been going, but uh, at least our influence is pretty well put together, so I think we'll be okay. My opponent's playing Argentport. We have a good matchup against Argentport, like we get to combust their very, very big things. We get to use Jawbone Greatsword against most of their small things. And then Jack is just like a really, really good way to sort of finish things out. Argentport tends to be pretty creature focused. It also has some void recursion and Jack's void bound ability is really, really good for just basically locking down boards and making sure that Tavrods and Varas don't come back as often as they should. Uh, it's also very good for locking down Kyphus, which uh, yeah, anything that void binds Kyphus at the moment is pretty powerful in the meta. Crest of Chaos looks fine. Like I said, we have pretty sickly everything that we need in the deck, so continuing to get con uh, power draws is really, really solid because we get to just play cards for a while here and, you know, like manufacture into some Grenadin and then, like, trade the Grenadin with Ixtune Merchant, get a check. Like, basically, all I need right now is power and to be consistently playing power every turn. Now, if I want to rush this along, I can play Extreme Merchant to grab the Jack, and then we won't have to worry about Manufacture quite as fast. But I think I'm just going to take it slow, since my opponent's taking it slow as well. We will Manufacture, get the cards. Play the Crest, since Banner will be a playable card on the Grenadin. Jawbone Greatsword number two. I don't hate it. Um, I don't really need two brands, but it is a nice removal card for some things. Uh, he's not playing, like, torchable stuff, so this is good against empty boards. Jack creates empty boards. I think I like it. I think more tributes is probably what we're looking for right now, so it'd be kind of a bad idea to throw that back. Okay, now I can trade one in for a Jack, or I can just immediately combust a Grenadin for a Jawbone Greatsword. I can actually do Grenadin, Grenadin, Combust and Cell, and Combust for Jawbone Greatsword. The math on the power here is always like really interesting. There's a lot of different ways that you can suddenly just have a bit more power than it seems like you should. Um, so yeah, let's just do this. We're going to play a Grenadin. I'm going to eat the Grenadin. That gets us the Jawbone Greatsword, which allows us to hit him for five. Play another Grenadin, and a Skycrag Banner. I should have played the Skycrag Banner first, of course, if I wanted to like actually just hold on to that, but we're good to go, and I've got the brand without fear. So I can use Ixnune Merchant to trade for a Warhelm, but I'd rather trade for the Jack and actually like get some consistent cards established. Okay, so a lot of ways that we can do this. Uh, the obvious one is just Combustion Cell, Jack. That kills the 3-3. Three, three. And it leaves us with a Jawbone Greatsword to attack the board. What's the bounty? 
Grenadin here is fine. There might be a harsh roll, so it's tempting to leave it just in case we might need it. Also, it's a card that I'm going to trade to Ixtune Merchant if I feel like it, so there's, there's a couple of options here. That's fine. Trust in your skills. Unseen Commando is a little bit scarier, but we're just going to go Assembly Line. If I want to combust here, I can. Yeah, let's combust here. That allows me to play Ixtune Merchant, get the Jack for the next turn. And then we'll just combust that. Five damage to face. Nice bit of control there, and we're still pretty flush with cards. We've got the second job on Greatsword to hit him with, so I can just slowly keep an eye on things, keep things under control. Uh, this is going to be Voidbound once I play Jack, so I don't really care if it's big or small. Um, we are definitely going to kill it, and it's not going to come back. So all we do is Combustion Cell here. Here's Jack. And that's game. Yeah, so really, really simple control setup. Like, once we had the job on Greatsword, that was pretty easy. Uh, you can't play one unit a turn against this deck because we are just way too good at that kind of stuff. So that's that's one of the reasons why that matchup is so strong. Um, but yeah, worked out really well and pretty happy with the results. So good, good stuff. All right, here we are up against Zia X Guan. Zia X Guan. Uh, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but uh, Crest of Fury, Crest of Cunning, Stone Scar, Banner, Granite, Waystone. And yeah, they've got an interesting setup. I've got an interesting setup. I have a lot of Granite in here, which I really like. Uh, everything else about this hand is just mediocre, but it should be good enough. Um, if I can find some Combusts or Combustion Cells, then I think we've got a pretty good start. And four power is certainly not unreasonable. All of the influences here. I've got the primal. I've got the shadow. I don't need the crest of cutting right now. Yeah, we've got four power in hand, so we we don't need more power at the moment. We'll just go ahead and toss that back. See what we get. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Crest of cunning. Combust. Good. 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 Assembly line is yet more grenadine. It's kind of tempting to play another assembly line. Grenadin are a valuable resource in this deck. I don't hate it, basically. I have the Combust and the Madness already. Yeah, we can actually swarm the board with this, so that seems pretty reasonable. I'd rather play Granite Waystone to get a Grenadin, but at this point it's undepleted power, so we're going to play that for Assembly Line, then we're going to Stone Scar Banner and play another Assembly Line, then Manufacture, Combust, Madness, all of that stuff. We can actually swarm our opponent with tokens and not have to worry about Jack or any of our big tributes for a little while. Um, this does have some aggression on board, and it's really hard to kill tokens effectively if you're in certain colors. Elysian's not a particularly strong color against tokens. It does sometimes run Hailstorm, but that's not always that frequent. Okay, so Granite Waystone, assemble. And I would love to combust this before it turns into a bunch of cards, but we might not get that lucky. Aurelian Merchant fetches, like, something. So yeah, Madness Combust here looks really good. I get to steal the Friendly Wisp, attack with it, and then, like, kill the Aurelian Merchant. Or I can steal the Aurelian Merchant and then... Yeah, I actually think I would rather that they not have the Aurelian Merchant in their void. So we're gonna do this. This. And now my opponent has less power to cast cards and also has nothing on board again. Which, uh, yeah, I'm pretty into that. That's a pretty tricky use of Madness Combust, like I'm not sure if this is going to be good if my opponent ends up having a lot more stuff, it becomes a problem, but at the moment we're in pretty good shape. Okay, uh, Relian Merchant number two, that probably gets him the influence or the power he needs. Okay, he already had power, so not a big deal there. Just attack on in. I wouldn't mind manufacturing here, playing down some credit in that way, but I think Assembly Line is probably the best route to getting some damage across, and also will force my opponent to be a bit more reactive. Ah, uh, World Bear Behemoth's a fun one to steal. A couple of ways that we can do this. I really want to play the end of the line. I think I'm just going to attack all in. We'll lose a Granadin, and then I'll get to end of the line his Aurelian Merchant, so feels pretty comfy. So get the Aurelian Merchant. Get the damage to face. 
End of the line provides some reach to decks that don't typically have reach. So now, like, our Madness is looking a lot Safe better. Travel, it's actually 5 damage combined with, like, the Grenadine attacking, so feels pretty good right now. Uh, my opponent will probably be attacking with his uh, World Bear Behemoth, of course, so... Oh, well, actually kept it back just because he was afraid of the attack, which, super happy with that. Let's see if we can find, like, an end of hostilities. Okay, no cool warp cards, so we'll just go ahead and Madness here. Attack in for as much as we can. Fire Sigil, not a card I need. Still don't have the warp card, that's okay. This is still 5 damage plus, like, a bunch of tokens. So without even, like, actually playing our Combustion Cell, we had some reach. The Madness really helped with that reach. The End of the Lines really helped with that reach. And now a Manufacturer here just draws me a couple of cards that I can play with. So I've got him down to 2. Um, I get to play a bunch of Grenadin. Uh, Zhezhuan can obviously deal with at least one of these Grenadin or play enough blockers to be okay. But he can't attack with his uh, World Bear Behemoth, so that's got to feel a little rough. Let's play down two more Grenadin just to push the envelope a little bit. Since he hasn't played an Elysian Banner, I'm tempted to play the last Grenadin as well and just make sure that we have the Swarm. Like, if he plays two blockers right now, he's okay, so... Yeah, one more Grenadin should do it. Uh, it could be that he's got a Hailstorm and this was a terrible idea. Oh no. Oh no, I think he just drew a Hailstorm. I think that was a top deck Hailstorm, you guys. <laughs> my greed becomes my undoing. No! <laughs> got it! <laughs> okay, alright, we're all good. So that was just a desperation attack. <laughs> the tension, the tension! Alright, some of you might have noticed we made a slight update uh, mid-game there. While I was playing that Callus in the first round, I felt like it was just, like, I'd, Grenadine are such an important resource in this deck that I went back to having a Jack the Lone Gun in my market. Uh, this deck was, that was something that was added late in tuning, and, eh, yeah, it just didn't really feel like it was working out. So, we put the Jack back in the market. There's another Brimstone Altar in place of the Callus, or in place of the Jack, rather. So, uh, this is the finished list, and if you guys like it, then, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. We're actually going to do a breakdown on the deck that basically draws, uh, the, the deck that this is somewhat inspired from, which is Kenadins, pretty soon. I'm hoping to do a bunch of the more meta-based decks and talk a little bit more about those in Bruce videos soon as well. So stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed the content, and I will see you guys next time with more Eternal Brews, and also some basics, I hope. We're working on that this weekend. Cheers, everyone. Have a good night.